Very futuristic, huh? Good afternoon. Uh, before we hear from uh, John Brennan, the president's uh, advisor on counterterrorism and homeland security, I wanted to start today with, a, uh, with an announcement. Today, Ukraine announced a landmark decision to get rid of all of its stockpile of highly enriched uranium by the time of the next nuclear security summit in 2012. Ukraine intends to remove a substantial part of its stocks this year. Ukraine will convert its civil nuclear research facilities to oper operate with low enriched uranium fuel. Uh, this is something that the United States has tried to make happen uh, for more than 10 years. The material is enough to construct several nuclear weapons. Uh, and this demonstrates Ukraine's continued leadership in nonproliferation and comes in an important region where we know a lot of highly enriched uranium exists. Uh, with that, let me turn this over to uh, John Brennan. Uh, I can answer some, and, and John and I can answer. We'll both answer questions. Good afternoon, everyone. The threat of nuclear terrorism is real, it is serious, it is growing, and it constitutes one of the greatest threats to our national security and, indeed, to global security. Over the past two decades, there has been indisputable evidence that dozens of terrorist groups have actively sought some type of weapon of mass effect. Relative to other such potential weapons, which include biological, chemical, radiological, the consequences and impact of a nuclear attack would be the most devastating as well as the most lasting. Thus, the ability to obtain a nuclear weapon and to use it is the ultimate and most prized goal of terrorist groups. Al-Qaeda is especially notable for its long-standing interest in acquiring weapons usable nuclear material and the requisite expertise that would allow it to develop a yield-producing improvised nuclear device. Al-Qaeda has been engaged in the effort to acquire a nuclear weapon for over 15 years, and its interests remain strong today. Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups know that if they are able to acquire highly enriched uranium or separated plutonium and turn it into a weapon, they would have the ability not only to threaten our security and world order in an unprecedented manner, but also to kill and injure many thousands of innocent men, women, and children, which is Al-Qaeda's sole agenda. Disturbingly, international organized criminal syndicates and criminal gangs are keenly aware of the strong interest of terrorist groups to acquire fissile material, which has prompted these criminals to pursue nuclear materials for their own personal gain. Over the past decade, there has been a significant increase in the sharing of terrorism-related intelligence among nations of the world. To include intelligence on the ways and means used by al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups to pursue their nuclear weapon ambitions. While this intelligence sharing is invaluable, it must be accompanied by a collective and effective action by all nations of the world to deny and to deprive terrorist and criminal groups the opportunity to gain the nuclear-related material and the expertise that would allow them to fulfill their evil goals. Indeed, our future and the future of generations yet to come depend on our ability to safeguard these materials and expertise. So while there are many different nuclear issues that the administration is addressing, there is none more important than this one. That is why we are focusing specifically on nuclear terrorism and nuclear security over the next two days, because these issues must be addressed with a sense of focus and urgency. Thank you. All right. With that, let us uh, – we'll all take a series of questions. Yes, sir. Mr. Gibbs, question for you on Ukraine and a question for Mr. Brennan, if I could, on uh, al-Qaeda. Uh, this highly enriched uranium, wh where is it going to be sent? Yeah, uh, the final disposition uh, location uh, is yet to be determined. Um, uh, that the announcement and the agreement uh, obviously happened just uh, a little bit ago. That's a process uh, that we'll be working on. The United States will provide uh, some degree of both technical and financial assistance uh, to ensure that it happens. Destination for the uh, it's among them, yes. Okay. And may I ask a question? Of course. 
Uh, you mentioned with regard to al-Qaeda that they've been seeking nuclear weapons for 15 years and you, you described their interest as strong, remain strong, you said. Could you provide any evidence that they are actively pursuing a nuclear weapon? Are they on the black market or anything that you can point to that they're doing today? Well, I think over the past 15 years you have open testimony in court about al-Qaeda's efforts to, for example, try to obtain uranium in Sudan in 1994. You have statements that uh, al-Qaeda seniors, including bin Laden and Zawahri, have made about their determination to use and to seek those weapons. They say it's in the defense of you know, their agenda, which purports to be Muslim. And there is a strong body of intelligence that goes back over the past decade that clearly indicates that al-Qaeda is, has been trying to procure these materials on the open market and with criminal syndicates. So the evidence is strong. The, uh, the track, work, track record is uh, demonstrated, and uh, we know uh, that al-Qaeda continues to pursue these materials. David? Uh, Mr. Friend, just a follow-up on that uh, same question. Uh, are you aware of any effort by al-Qaeda to um, obtain material or expertise since the meeting that took place just before 9-11, where the members, the former members of the Khan Research Laboratory traveled up to uh, talk to Osama bin Laden. And secondly, are you aware of any um, efforts at this point, continuing efforts, to uh, infiltrate that body of trained scientists in Pakistan or training outside in Europe who would then come back into the labs? There have been numerous reports over the years, over the past eight or nine years, about attempts uh, throughout the world to obtain various types of purported uh, material uh, that is nuclear-related. We know that al-Qaeda has been involved in a number of these efforts to acquire it. But fortunately, I think they've been scammed a number of times, but we know that they have continued to pursue that. We know individuals within the organization that have been given that responsibility. So there has been, I think, uh, demonstrated uh, interest across a number of years. And uh, also one of the things we're most concerned about is that this is probably the most sensitive of their uh, efforts, and therefore it will have only very few people involved in the effort, and therefore it requires that uh, very good intelligence uh, work that's done. And the second question as far as potential insider threat, uh, throughout the world I think al-Qaeda is looking for those vulnerabilities and facilities and stockpiles in different countries that would allow them to obtain the byproducts of nuclear uh, reactors and materials that they can use, but also to go after those individuals that might have access to the materials as well as individuals who have the expertise that they need to actually fabricate an improvised nuclear device. Any evidence they've actually managed to do that, particularly in the Pakistan West? There's evidence of their attempts to do that. Um, I, I would like to think that we have been able to thwart uh, their success to date. You can leave that up here if you want. Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Brennan, two questions. <laughs> What kind of reassurance did the President get from the Prime Minister of Pakistan? Did you, have, did you get some reassurance that they understand this issue? What they're doing on the ground here? I think being so close to where Al Qaeda is physically, that they are doing everything they can to protect technology and the technology and the getting it out of there. Two, can you describe the nature of who these gangs are? You're talking about criminal gangs, organized crime, Russian. Well, let me just, uh, before John gets uh, to Pakistan, I would um, read you from the readout of yesterday that the president indicated um, his appreciation uh, of that broad-based sentiment and used, uh, and used addressing the topic of the conference, reasserted the importance of nuclear security, a priority that he has reiterated for all countries. The Prime Minister uh, of Pakistan indicated his assurance that Pakistan takes nu nuclear security uh, seriously uh, and has appropriate safeguards in place. Well, yeah. And then uh, on, on Poland, uh, no, no decisions have yet been made. I, I, I think they are uh, – scheduling is looking at a number of possibilities. I'm not going to get into the details of the bilateral discussions that may have taken place, but today's event is a seminal one as far as nuclear security is concerned. But also it is um, 
part of a process that was started, at least in this administration, 15 months ago, where we've had regular and ongoing conversations with a number of nations of the world, to include Pakistan, uh, addressing the goals and objectives that we know that al-Qaeda is after and what types of threat they pose to our interests and to the interests of other countries. So our engagement with Pakistan runs the full gamut as far as what al-Qaeda is trying to do, whether it be to kill in innocents or to carry out other types of attacks and objectives that uh, really threaten uh, our national security and the Pakistani national security. On the issue of those international organized crime, sometimes they're criminal gangs that are, uh, have information that some material had come out from the, let's say, the area of the former Soviet Union or some stockpiles, and they will try to um, provide that uh, material uh, to other groups to sell. Uh, as I said, a lot of